Krishna Padaya Krishna Krishna Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nati Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Kritcharine Nirvishesha Shri Hari Pastitya Vishatarine All from my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master His Divine Grace Shri Prabhupada who is the dear most servitor of Saraswati Goswami having come to the west to preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Dev and to rid it of voidism and impersonalism Nidavashesha Shunyavadi Voidism and Impersonalism and That point is very very important when we offer respects to the spiritual master because for the most part people's understanding of God is impersonal they don't understand or see God as an, as an absolute person they see God as an energy, as a force, as some spiritual whisper, cloudy mist or whisper or something, but they cannot actually define what and who God is. Because when we say that the God is a person, people don't really understand that or believe that because their experience of anything personal or personhood or personality is in a limited mortal being. Everything we consider as a person is in a limited being. So when people think a person, they think, well, then God must, if he's a person, obviously he's limited. That's because they're putting God on the same platform as human beings. But he is the supreme person, meaning that, he is, he, that, 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 that all the qualities that we have as human beings, he has them to an unlimited degree and more. So, Nidvishesha <laughs> Shunyavadi. He has come, the Master has come to rid the world of voidism and impersonalism and to get them to understand their eternal relationship with God, the Supreme Person. Hare Krishna. Hello. My name is Kupa Ali Shabazz. I'm also known as Warrior Shabazz, or amongst the Vaishnav devotee community, I am known as Abhilas Das. I'm an initiated disciple of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And today I'd like to speak about a document that Srila Prabhupada incorporated legally and is legally bound at the behest of many of the devotees, I've been asked to say something about Srila Prabhupada's Direction of Management document. Here's the document here. Now, for those of you who do not know what the Direction of Management document is, it is a document that is that has been legally incorporated by Srila Prabhupada in how he would like the GBC to manage his ISKCON movement. And the reason why I'm, I'm speaking now about this is because for the last 40 years, well nearly 40 years, we've come to know that many of his instructions in this document have not been followed by his senior most disciples, those are who are supposed to be leading this ISKCON movement. And because of this, so much scandal and upheaval has happened. Um, and it is, it, is, it is wrong because we know according to the scriptural authorities, what happens when the disciples do not follow the instructions of the spiritual master. So I'm going to read a couple things written by Srila Prabhupada and by some of his disciples in regards to the GBC. Now, the GBC actually, what, what that terminology means is the Governing Body Commission. And it was set up by Srila Prabhupada, as I stated previously, because he, he wanted his society to be run and managed nicely according to his, his will. So, here are a couple points that must be noted. And, and this is actually uh, Srila Prabhupada's words, uh, legally bound. And it states here in the beginning of the Directions of Management document. I, the undersigned A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, disciple of Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa, Shri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj came to the United States in 1965 on September the 18th for the purpose of starting this Krishna consciousness movement. For one year I had no shelter. I was traveling in many parts of this country, 
Then in 1966, July, I incorporated the society under the name and style of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, briefly ISKCON. The lawyer was Mr. J. Goldsmith. Gradually the society increased and one after another branches were opened. Now we have got 34 branches enlisted herewith. And on the document there's a listing of all the uh, temples that have been established at that time. Prabhupada further states, as we have increased our volume of activities, now I think a governing body commission, herein referred to as the GBC, should be established. I am getting old, 75 years old, therefore at any time I may be out of the scene. Therefore I think it necessary to give instructions to my disciples how they shall manage the whole institution. I'm going to repeat that statement because it is extremely important. I think it is necessary to give instructions to my disciples how they shall manage the whole institution. They are already managing individual centers represented by one president, one secretary, and one treasurer. This is another important point that I will comment on further. And in my opinion they are doing nice, but we want still more improvement in the standard of temple management and propaganda for Krishna consciousness, distribution of books and literatures, opening of new centers, and educating devotees to the right standard. This statement in this last paragraph that states um, the opening of new centers and educating devotees to the right standard. Interestingly enough, there are so many devotees, in fact most devotees, who have never even heard of the Directions of Management document. In fact, a few days ago I was speaking with a devotee who has dedicated his life to Krishna consciousness for 27 years and he had never heard of the Directions of Management document. In fact, most temple presidents have never even heard heard of this document because the GBC has systematically decided and collectively to not inform temple presidents and the larger wider devotee community about this document. I, I, actually when I think about it, I had lived in the temple for over eight years and in that time I had listened to and participated in thousands of classes on Krishna conscious philosophy thousands of classes on Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Upadeshambhita, Nectar of Devotion, Bhakta classes, Ishta Gosti classes. And in all that time, in all those thousands of classes, not once ever has the direction of management document been mentioned. Not once. Now, there are some devotees who will say, well, you shouldn't be speaking about these things um, publicly. Uh, this should be handled in-house, so to speak. We should keep this amongst ourselves within the devotee community. But the fact of the matter is, literally thousands of disciples of Srila Prabhupada have contacted uh, the GBC, the sannyas and gurus, with questions uh, about the, man the managerial style of the GBC. They've questioned them on the validity of their instructions, and they have not been answered. I myself have contacted GBC members with uh, querying, uh, querying them as to uh, certain uh, uh, improprieties and I've not been answered. So they give us no choice. Therefore I myself and many of the devotees we are coming forth because we feel that this must be done. Because we try to follow the instructions and be humble devotees but the fact of the matter is this movement this ISKCON, it is being headed up, it is headed up and it's being run by persons who are not adhering to the standard that was laid out by Srila Prabhupada. So we're coming forth in force. We're coming forth with uh, energy, with enthusiasm. And we will be heard. In fact, we are being heard. And I thank all of you for giving me, uh, encouraging me with the impetus to Take this on as my personal service, and Hare Krishna.